welcome to Cisco Idea Lab, our special conversation series where we catch up with thought leaders from diverse fields and deep dive into innovative ideas that can shape our future. Albert Einstein once said that amidst every crisis lies great opportunity. The coronavirus pandemic across the world is perhaps the greatest crisis that we've seen in recent times. Businesses around the world have been at a standstill, but are there opportunities that business leaders are taking out of this pandemic? How are they gearing up for the new normal? How are they mitigating the COVID-19 crisis in their respective organizations? And what will leadership look like post the pandemic? Those are some of the questions that we are trying to answer here today in our Cisco Idea Lab that has in fact moved with the times to turn virtual. Let me welcome our panelists for today. Keval Handa, Chairman of Union Bank of India. Samir Garde, President of Cisco India and SARC. B. Ashok, CEO of RRPCL. Tarun Katyal, CEO of Z5. And K. Ganesh, serial entrepreneur and investor in brands like Big Basket, Portia Medical and others. Welcome, gentlemen. Thanks for joining us here in the virtual avatar of the Cisco Idea Lab. Uh, and this pandemic, I'm sure, has been a true test for all of you on multiple fronts. Lots of battles being fought out there, uh, keeping your employees safe, enabling remote working for them, ensuring that your bottom lines uh, stay alive, ensuring that you are dealing with supply chain constraints uh, in, a, in a market like this. So kudos to all of you for dealing with uh, these multiple things every day. Samir, if I can begin by asking you at Cisco, what are the top two or three areas that have been significantly impacted by COVID-19? What has your priority list uh, looked like over the last two months at Cisco? So I think the first one was, of course, our employees uh, and figure out a way in which we can help them work uh, securely, more importantly, from home. So I think technology today is uh, available to make sure that we can uh, manage that uh, very quickly through SaaS offerings. Uh, so overall in India, we were able to do approximately 250,000 employees between us and our partners uh, to move to work from home pretty much overnight, right? I think the second piece was our customers. Uh, and it was very critical that we help our customers in this environment. The IT sector had invested significantly on work from home capabilities, but they still had a few nicks that we had to help them with. The banking sector had actually not invested in work from home to that extent. So I think we had to do a lot more work there. Uh, so we've been working very closely through CSR and other technology initiatives uh, to help the government in managing the pandemic, right? So for example, at the Ministry of Health, we've been able to build dashboards to help them get data in one place to make sure that the first responders can do things uh, quickly. And finally, I think communities, right? So we've been help working with you know, our, our CSR partners like Akshay Patra and all to give meals uh, to these people who are going back home. Uh, so I think at all levels and on, on, I think the business side, clearly supply chain is significantly impacted because a lot of it was sitting in China for the first month um, we did have that problem, uh, but we've been able to very, in a, in a very agile fashion, move that around the world. Uh, and I think the supply chain is uh, reasonably stabilized now. A lot of things from a business model perspective that we are currently working on, starting with seeing whether we should be looking at a higher percentage of workers permanently working from home. Uh, what would be the impact on real estate costs? Um, how do we manage our businesses, more virtual selling, uh, less field selling and and so on and so forth right so lots of things on the table right now uh, still looking through all of that right great uh, let me also bring in mr handa uh, banks of course are likely to see a spike in credit costs as well as non performing assets in the year 2020 uh, because of the recession caused by covid-19 how's the sector gearing up for these things i think there are a whole lot of measures being uh, announced uh, for msme and the agriculture sector how do we reach to them how these people get in touch with us for the additional facilities. Maybe the physical moment is not possible. So we discussed this with the bank and we said, can we have all the documents online? Can we have even the digital signatures done so that a person gets everything online and gets the money immediately? Then there are a whole lot of other measures they are talked about, particularly just to pick up one is, how do you make uh, money available to the thelawalas? Right. Uh, it's very possible for us to 
bank as a first to identify the thela wala, his need, and to service him and all to recover the money. So we thought about novel way. Why don't you take the micro financial group together? Why don't you ask them to do all that? And so that the money goes to the thela wala immediately, and he starts his business. All of you would ask us the same question: What's happening to your NPA? We are just able to manage our past NPA, and then we will have some future uh, a potential NPAs probably. But I don't right. think so. I'm really worried about it right now because okay. what we are doing is making liquidity available, ensuring that there is a moratorium, so he bounces back and he has a, enough profitability to pay it back. Right. All right. Good to hear that, sir. Uh, Ashok, if I can come to you next. This pandemic has been historic with crude prices uh, crashing down to below zero dollars a barrel for the first time in our lifetime. I think uh, globally there has been significant contraction in demand, of course, because uh, of industry coming to standstill, uh, aviation coming to a standstill. What's the kind of disruption that has happened in the India energy space? Well, uh, we see lots of natural disasters happening around and always uh, petroleum products being essential services. Uh, there is a need to meet uh, the demand. But this pandemic has been very different um, in the sense that uh, there's a huge amount of demand destruction which has happened here. In a country like India, when you talk of demand destructions, it's not across the products. That's the uh, beauty of the whole thing. You know, you have products like gasoline, diesel, uh, aviation fuel, etc., which where the demand has, uh, you know, in varying, varying degrees, it has got destructed. But you have another product called LPG, where the growth has been almost to the order of 25% in the domestic segment. So when you have one input and you produce multiple outputs and you find one of the products is growing at, say, 25% and the rest of the products are having huge degrowth. So it's a very typical challenge uh, for the uh, oil and gas industry. I mean, how do you meet the essential uh, requirements? The second is the varying degrees of uh, you know, destruction or the growth which is happening in different places. So we have to reorganize the entire supply chain, manage uh, the issues, and of course, the people-related issues, whether it's the own employees who are changing their ways of working, working from home, et cetera, to managing the channel partners across. So it's been a uh, challenge, but I think so far we have managed it pretty well. Right. Coming to you, Tarun, uh, in the entertainment media space, you've, of course, seen demand surge through the roof uh, over the last couple of months as far as content is concerned, uh, especially through the lockdown as urban Indians have stayed home and wanted to watch all kinds of things uh, on TV and OTT platforms. Uh, uh, beyond ensuring employee safety, what else has been in focus for you? Have you been changing business strategies uh, and uh, how are you changing your workplace in the long run? So, you know, this has been a black swan event for people like us. Um, the move to OTT or digital video streaming or digital video consumption had been quite real uh, over the last 18 to 24 months. But this uh, one big event has actually changed the entire course of our business. You know, we were, as a tech company, always very digital first, and we've been able to do remote working for many, many years, and also a lot of our development partner partners were remote. But on the user side, uh, because of the surge in demand, there was also a surge in bandwidth usage, right? And we had to over overnight actually change our entire backend to be able to support bandwidth in many, many different ways. One uh, is actually bring down HD consumption. Two, encode uh, and transcode content very differently so that it could get two pipes and actually not load the telecom network too much. And third, uh, most importantly, uh, be able to produce content on an ongoing basis. And we've tried to do a lot of shows virtually. Uh, we've also tried to get into green zones across the country and set up production. We've also tried to go abroad um, and, and shoot some shows in, in green zones where Indians are available across the world and do this virtually with virtual crews and so on and so forth. Ganesh, what are the top trends that uh, you know the companies that you've invested in uh, have observed uh, a lot of these uh, behavioral changes in customers will perhaps continue post-pandemic as well. Uh, you know, what is the kind of disruption that you're expecting in the next uh, year or two? So uh, we have a spectrum of companies and each one uh, based on the sector has got different kinds of tailwinds and headwinds. One of the common threads obviously is that consumer behavior has changed. Just take an example, big basket grocery, people were wanting for convenience now 
they want it convenience is secondary primary is they want safety keeping social distancing keeping safety and hygiene in mind or take for example potia medical uh, healthcare outside of hospital uh, we have now started doing home chemotherapy at home we are planning to do dialysis at home now these are things which are unimaginable pre covid that for something like a chemotherapy you would not go to a hospital so very clearly consumer changes that i think some of it will go back to normal i am not saying people will not buy from the local store or kirana stores they will go but we have seen permanent change in behavior or a large section will continue to stay uh, if i can come back to you samir uh, one of the other big trends that has come out of this pandemic is of course remote working and uh, at cisco what are the do's and don'ts that you would have for leaders who are enabling work from home from a leadership point of view uh, what we are seeing and let me start with the don'ts first uh is uh, i think uh, then employees are not going to be at their workstations all the time so i think firstly think about uh the environment that they are in uh, not everybody has houses which are conducive to working at home uh, there are you know students or there are young people who are working in organizations who are sharing offices or sharing homes right uh, how do they manage that environment where everybody might have a call together uh, and they might be staying in one room Uh, the other thing is, you know, help them during this time. Help them learn new skills. Uh, we, for example, asked our field leadership to work with our virtual sales and digital selling team uh, to learn some new skills of sell selling, right? Which they never, never looked at it. Prioritize security. I think cyber security is probably paramount in these uh, times because, you know, even if you have a VPN, people will go to the internet outside of the VPN. and you get exposed to uh, malicious uh, sites as a result of that so prioritize security i would say as one of the leadership uh, things um, so i would say you know this is a real test of leadership be agile be open be transparent be trustworthy lots of insights there coming from uh, samir of cisco but on that note let's head into a short break right now the conversation continues on the other side right here on cisco idea lab that is now in fact virtual exclusively on cnbc tv 18 Welcome back to Cisco Idea Lab exclusively on CNBC TV 18 our special conversation series where thought leaders deep dive into innovative ideas that can shape our future. Today of course we are talking about managing the COVID-19 crisis and what leadership will look like in a post pandemic world. Mr. Handa if I can bring you in uh, you know as a business leader what new goal posts are you setting for your digital journey? and uh, has covid-19 really accelerated the pace of your digital transformation journey at this point as a leader you know the demand for a tomorrow's leadership is quite different a leader today needs to have a high eq an eq we can connect everyone it's it's in the virtual time we have seen that leaders who were able to connect with people who were able to motivate virtually were able to do things quite differently and the pharmaceutical industry and one of the companies we advise is uh, they used to not do any virtual meetings uh, but you know the time and the necessity as well as the motivation came from leadership and now they are doing almost about five or six uh, webinars every day so it's a very critical if you want to go a digital route that you need to have an ecosystem of safety when i say if ecosystem system of safety means you need to allow people to make mistakes it need to to allow them to experiment and explore that's very critical as a leader everybody is radically open for change now it's a right opportunity to take them on that path right ashok if i can come to you in the post pandemic world uh, as far as the energy sector is concerned do you think sustainability will be more center stage than ever well yes there are a few uh, major lessons uh, which we have we, we can say we have drawn uh, for leaders leaders in the business the first one is i mean uh, how leaders have to prepare for a future i mean how do you make use of the opportunities and uh, what should be your decision making ability i mean we need to make a decision on our toes literally so that is a major thing the second thing i would say is uh, i mean transferring from me to we i think that's the single biggest lesson which we have drawn from this not everything we can achieve by ourselves individually 
i think the entire competition will need to be uh, redefined now we will have to work in partnerships especially in big and in large industries like uh, energy where huge investments are being made it is quite uh, now impossible for individual organizations to make big capital commitments and take all the risks by themselves even though the rewards rewards may look very attractive so i think uh, sustainability is certainly going to play a very major role uh, in terms of how we continue that interesting observation you made there uh, ashok about collaboration really being key to coming out of this pandemic uh, safely samir how are business leaders gearing up to really uh, balance employee safety as they slowly come back to work and revival of business Personally, I think going forward, we need to figure out within the ambit of providing safety for employees, communities, and citizens, how do we ensure that we open up the economy and get the economy back on track? Uh, so we will need something drastic to make sure that people uh, start buying, right? Uh, having said that, I think you know having a portfolio of products and solutions and services always helps. uh right so that you if if one of your products and services is badly hit you at least have other industries which have seen massive tailwinds and products which have seen massive tailwinds to be offered to those industries between january to april we have increased our consumption of webex 3x right now the 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 data centers that are hosting webex were not designed for this right so we had to quickly get that going today surprisingly and i i got to know about this a week ago India is the second largest user of Webex in the world after the US, right? A hundred million minutes uh, uh, being utilized, and uh, it's just amazing, right? So having that portfolio uh, as a company from a supply side, and I think the government and the businesses need to get together to say, guys, we've taken a massive beating. Now let's focus on within the ambit of safety. How do we get the businesses back? Karun, we are all talking about this new normal, a post-pandemic world, post-COVID-19 world. Uh, what is it going to look like for businesses like yours? Uh, will costs of filming go up significantly as we practice social distancing? Will movies only be looking at digital-first releases, uh, you know, and not at theatrical releases, at least for this time in which we are living with the virus? uh you know what else are you preparing yourself for yes movies may go direct to digital digital for the uh, for the next at least 6 to 12 months um, theaters look like a tough option but then you must understand the cost of movies is not uh, built around just digital releases so there will have to be a lot of balance that will have to be brought in um, also filming and cost of filming is another issue so crews are going to be smaller we will have to live with much better planning uh the indian film industry is is not the best in in controlled environments and planned shoots but i think all of us are trying our best to make sure that we change that dynamic and use technology use planning tools use predictive ai much better than we've ever done ganesh in the post pandemic times how should businesses prepare to really uh, you know how should they prepare their workforces in fact uh, for disruption how should they gear up to ensure that they are winning even Uh, in the new normal some of the things that we are encouraging startups entrepreneurs and founders to do is one hire for flexibility hire for the ability to learn new skills and multitask point number 2 can we avoid fixed cost to the extent possible can we variableize the cost either by working with partners working with the rest of the ecosystem can we ensure we at least have 12 to 18 months of runway and not fly too close to the sun many of the companies most of the companies including my own startup have been guilty of going for growth going for market share going for expansion in the hope that in the next 6 months i will raise valuation at a higher number i think it has been a great uh, sobering experience for the startup and entrepreneurial ecosystem and as we wrap up i'm going to ask each one of you to tell me what is the single biggest leadership lesson that this pandemic has taught you ashok well i talked about inclusiveness in whatever we do and of course uh, sustainability uh, in the way we look at business as a whole i think this has been a very major lesson and of course working with uh, through with partnerships uh, cooperating and uh, competing so it is a coopetition if i may call it that way mr handa so the stubborn time what has happened is you know 
fundamentally it has challenged the assumptions on which the strategies of the organization have been based as a result of which once the strategy is no more uh, become redundant the entire organization is becoming redundant so a very great leadership lesson that we are going to learn is is how do we build the capability within the organization to identify or map the potential black spots and having identified how do you prepare for those black spots i think yeah. we sit in the audit committees on financial risk i didn't think so in any of my audit committees we even discussed what happens if the organization is closed for two months but today these types of risk not only we need to map it up but also be prepared to take it at all i think this is the biggest lesson and 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 a leadership that we have learned so i think uh, the single biggest learning that i've had is trust i think you know when you're not in the same workplace and people are working from home you've got to trust them you've got to motivate them uh, for them to be self motivated to kick off projects and i think we've seen some incredible amount of rise in productivity only because i think we trust each other uh, to do the best for the organization to do the best uh, for their colleagues and to do the best for the users ganesh my biggest uh, learning has been that people rally behind a cause with huge amount of enthusiasm and force just as an example we started a social initiative of feeding the migrant laborer uh, when the lockdown started today we have done 40 lakh meals to migrant laborers it's a social cause the way we were able to raise money the way we were able to get volunteers in five cities the way we were able to cook food when there is lockdown and literally do a startup to 40 lakh meals is because we are able to get 400 volunteers across five cities come together behind a cause the purpose show them the why and they will rally behind you that's the power of a team don't right. forget, don't worry about how and what indeed purpose drives uh, like nothing else does uh, samir final word to you your biggest leadership lesson from the pandemic that you wish to carry forward uh, to the new normal you know most of us on this panel would have seen some crisis or the other maybe three of them at least right the the silicon valley crisis the 911 crisis the 2008 crisis but this one is like way way out of the league of those crises right uh, so personally i i at least one of the big lessons that i have learned is uh, disruptions and discontinuities they never stop businesses right uh, even if you go back to the crisis that i just mentioned it they actually create possibility they create new ways of innovating and new ways of doing things the second thing that i think um, you know I, i must tell you i did not have i did not ever give so much thought to migrant workers before this right so i, I think the social fabric of this country and how it intertwines with each other Uh, is probably one of the biggest lessons that i have learned uh, during this and thirdly this whole concept of being environmentally conscious you know we've been talking about it pre covid also but this accentuates it to a level which is beyond imagination right i mean we've seen great weather and we've seen great non polluted weather in india for a long time now for 60 days uh, but i think people will become a lot more environmentally aware at least i have become a lot more environmentally aware uh, over just the last 60 days indeed and the irony is that the the best weather and the uh, clean air and the green grass has come about at a time when we've all been locked down inside our houses uh, but well uh, uh, great that these conversations will perhaps take center stage now gentlemen thank you very much for joining us here today in the cisco idea lab and sharing your very valuable insights that's a wrap for this edition of cisco idea lab we'll be back next time with lots more news and updates continue on cnbc tv 18 goodbye